Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday morning in the old cookbook show. Today we're going to do a recipe out of this 1932 cookbook called the National Cookbook. Uh, and the subtitle is A Kitchen Americana. Um, and to that end, every recipe in this book is attributed to a different US state. Um, not necessarily the state foods, but just you know recipes that you would find common in those places prior to 1932. Uh, this is during the Great Depression, but most of these recipes harken back to earlier times. Um, and definitely the recipe that we're doing today is laden with meat. Now, maybe in Mississippi, camp stew in 1932 was still made this way. Maybe you were, lived on a farm and you had all of the meat that you could possibly want. Or maybe 20 people sat down and ate this, what I'm preparing today, that maybe like five people today would would polish off in no time at all. So this is a layered stew. Um, everything is put in in layers and cooked in layers. So the first layer is bacon. Put the bacon in here along the bottom of the pot. Okay, now the bacon, of course, is bringing fat and flavor and having it on the bottom of the pot like that uh, keeps everything from sticking to the bottom. Next up, it asks for two pounds shoulder of lamb, cut it up into pieces about two inches. Um, I've cut mine a little bit larger. I cut mine a little bit smaller, I mean, uh, a little bit more bite size. Two pounds of lamb is quite a bit of lamb. And I also have to imagine, um, in this time period, like it always was in this time period, uh, lamb is the one that they want you to use, or lamb is the one that maybe was traditional or, you know, regional. But people would have, by this time, used whatever meat they had. It could have been beef, it could have been pork, it could, probably could have been chicken um, would be really good in this. I looked at this recipe and I thought even a layer of beans instead of the meat uh, would be really good. Now, supposed to salt and pepper generously. And some pepper. Now I'd already put some salt and pepper on the lamb uh, before I put it in here. Next in is a layer of sliced onions. Get them mixed around. Layer of potatoes, and it specifically calls out raw potatoes for some reason, but here we go. Layer of potatoes. A layer of, oh, no, oh, boy. Salt and pepper each layer as I put it in. I forgot. This is where, you know, other cooking shows would stop and uh, pull out another another batch of food and start over um, and then not tell you that they'd made a mistake. I'm more roll with it. It'll be okay to add salt and pepper now. You didn't have to put it between each layer. It's a little bit of overkill. Next it asks for a layer of corn cut off the cob. Um, chances are if you live someplace like I do at the end of November, um, corn on the cob is difficult to get a hold of. Although I do see it in the grocery store. I would never buy it in the grocery store. Um, even in the height of summer, I wouldn't buy corn on the cob in the grocery store. Personal choice, my own personal choice. But in November, it's coming from so far away. Frozen corn is so much better because it is, it is cut off, flash frozen, at the point that it's ripe. Um, any corn on the cob that you're getting in the grocery store now shipped from California or Mexico to Canada is going to be tough and flavorless and frozen corn is the best idea. Middle of summer when I can go to the farm just up the street and get fresh corn, I would be using that for sure. Now, a layer of tomato on top of that. And this is another one. This tomato in November probably came from Mexico. Probably not the greatest. A uh, canned tomato would be just as good, probably better, but visually this looks pretty good. And salt and pepper. Okay, now I'm supposed to mix the parsley with Worcester sauce, vinegar, and melted butter into a sauce and then pour it on. I'm just gonna sprinkle the parsley on top. I don't know that mixing it into the sauce is really gonna do anything. 
because I'm just going to mix it in and then pour it in. If I was mixing it into the liquids and leaving it for, I don't know, an hour or so to get the flavors to meld, that might be a great idea. But, you know, mixing it quickly and then pouring it, I don't think that's going to do anything. And the Worcester sauce, about that much. Now, melted butter. Um, okay, put the melted butter in. Oh, it's, it's solidified in the amount of time that we've been out here. So, we'll get that mixed in. Um, there we go. Lid on and over to the stove top. Now I'm supposed to let this simmer gently for two hours. I'm going to start it out on the stove top. It says that uh, you could do it on the stove top or in the oven, um, but normally it would be done over a campfire. And I think this done over a campfire would be amazing. But I'm going to start it out on the stove top, um, mostly because I'm about to bake some cookies. As soon as the cookies are done baking, this is going to go into the oven. Ovens right now is at 350. I'll take the cookies out. I'll probably turn it down to 300 or 325, but I'll throw the pot in right away and just let the oven cool down naturally with that inside. And I'll probably end up cooking it in there for about an hour and a half, even after it's been here for about 45 minutes or so. So this book is published during the Great Depression. And in the introduction, the author really lambastes uh, for various sections of society and gluttony. Um, and yet, this stew uses two pounds of meat plus bacon. Uh, there's a little bit of a disconnect there for me. Okay. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Jules. Hey, friends. That's very pretty, Glenn. That's, that's very... Uh... It's a stew. It's I was called... just going to ask, is it a stew or is it a soup? Well, it's called Camp Stew. But it's it's layered, and I don't okay. know that the layering really. I don't think makes it look great. It does make it look great when you open it up, but it's kind of soupy know. though. Yeah. Okay. Meh, meh. So there you go, bowl of camp stew. <clears throat> it's got lots of good stuff in it. Yeah. A little bit of liquid there. And then you just balance it out with what you have most more of. Got more potatoes. Yeah. Or, you know... Less meat, more potatoes, beans, whatever. Looks hot, though. Mmm! <laughs> mm. So the vinegar... So there's, there's only salt and pepper. Vinegar... The vinegar adds a lot to it. And the Worcester sauce. I was trying to... Uh, and worst, okay. Yeah. So, so I'm like, it's got a really nice flavor. That vinegar, even though it's only like a tablespoon of vinegar it wasn't that much one tablespoon of vinegar and one tablespoon of Worcester sauce does bring a lot of flavor to that doesn't it mm -hmm. you know the slices of bacon on the bottom probably <laughs> add quite a bit of flavor too but it mm -hmm. is amazing how you can get really good flavors without adding a whole spice cabinet worth of spices yes yes it's not yes let's leave it with yes <laughs> That's really good. Mm hmm And I imagine this cooked over a fire, because it is camp stew. That would be most so excellent. Yeah, a little bit of that smoky flavor from the fire. Mm. This is really good. Um, I'm going to suggest that this is really good. And you could put any protein in there. That could be beef, pork, chicken, lamb, It could be beans that that you could take that beef or, or lamb layer mm -hmm. and supplement it either all beans or half beans and maybe not use two pounds of meat. Mm -hmm. and, because I know today, even today, two pounds of meat can be pretty expensive, you know, so supplement it with something else. <clears throat> but the flavor's there. And then add peas and... Whatever you like. Yeah. You like cabbage? Just throw it in. This is, oh, cabbage you like really, carrots? Throw it in. Cabbage and carrots would be really good in this. Okay, so this is a great recipe to start from. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.